Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and welcome to our Oath of the Gatewatch pre-release guide. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the upcoming pre-release so you could be better prepared to absolutely stomp faces. Any questions you have about the event, I hope to answer them in this video. If you're pumped for pre-release and enjoy our pre-release guides, be sure to hit that like button. It helps out a lot. Without further ado, let's get you ready for some spell slinging. If you've never gone to a pre-release before, this is what you should expect. The event itself will cost between $25 and $40 usually, depending on price support from your store. Most stores tend to hover around $25 or $30. Next thing you need to know, pre-releases are not short events. Most of them last at least 3 to 4 hours long, being conservative. You have a lot of players seeing the cards for the first time, so when you play in this event try to be patient. Not everyone is caught up with spoilers like you are. This would be the perfect time to introduce them to the mana source though, I'm just saying. So what do you get when you pre-release? This convenient graphic shows you. In this event, you'll get four packs of Oath of the Gatewatch, two packs of Battle for Zendikar, a foil promo version of a rare from the set, hopefully one that you'll be able to play and crush with, and a cool 20-sided die. The objective of this sealed event is to make the best deck you can out of the cards you open in these packs. Your deck must be 40 cards minimum, including land, and cannot include any cards you open outside of the event. You can only use cards you open in these exact packs. Remember that. Last general note before we get into strategy and specifics. Most pre-release organizers will provide you with basic lands of each color to help you build your deck. This time around, that'll still be the same. However, you will not be able to add the new waste basic lands to your deck if you don't open them in your packs. Yeah, they do not work like regular basic lands. You can only play the waste you open in your sealed pool. If you're caught putting in waste from outside of your pool, you will likely be disqualified, shunned, and embarrassment will follow you and your family forever. Okay, maybe not that serious, but you, you get what I mean. Oath of the Gatewatch pre-release is designed to support the two-headed giant format. I know many of you have no idea what I'm talking about. Two-headed giant is a format where two players are on the same team. Each team will open two pre-release packs, and you will make two decks out of those packs, then battle other teams of two. Take special note there. If your pre-release is two-headed giant, you can mix card pools freely with your teammate and build the best two decks you can out of those combined pools. However, make sure you decide beforehand how to divide up the cards afterwards, just to avoid hard feelings with your teammate. When actually playing two-headed giant, you and your teammate act as a single unit. You have a combined life total starting at 30 rather than 20. You both take your turns at the same time, which means you can coordinate your plays however you like. And yes, you can look at each other's hands freely. However, things that refer to your library, creatures you control, and so on still only mean the ones you control, not your teammates. Ultimately, it's basically a normal game of Magic, just with two decks on each side instead of one. I know it sounds crazy, but the format, especially in Limited, can be super fun. Let's talk strategy. A pre-release two-headed giant event is unlike any type of two-headed limited event you've seen before. Your card quality is going to be a lot higher than normal since you have a lot more cards to choose from. This means that you and your teammate really need to find your best colors and utilize them. This isn't the type of event where you can ride one bomb the entire way. It's not going to work against two opponents even if you have a partner trying to protect you. Trust me, one bomb isn't good enough here. Instead, you're playing with a partner, which means you have the opportunity to utilize powerful synergies and create decks that complement each other well. Again, remember, you aren't building alone. Build something that works well with your partner. That's the point of the entire event. Since we're focusing on Two-Headed Giant for a minute, we have to talk about Surge first. This mechanic was designed for Two-Headed Giant play, and you can bet your sweet patootie that players are going to use every decent Surge card they have. The bombs are what you'd expect. Crush of Tentacles, Fall of the Titans, and Tyrant of Valakit are your Surge powerhouses. While you shouldn't go into a color solely for one bomb, these are all very attractive choices and should still have some influence on your decisions. Luckily, Surge is only really in red and blue, so you should know relatively quickly whether or not it'll be possible to play them. Most Surge cards are playable as long as you can cast them for their Surge cost. The best are Boulder Salvo because cheap removal, Jawar Isle Avenger because a 3-3 flyer for 3 is unfair, and Containment Membrane. Can't undervalue that pseudo removal. I suppose Reckless Bushwhacker is also bonkers, but only if you have the aggressive deck for it. Next up is Support. This is also a great mechanic for the two-headed giant format since you can target any creature to put the plus one plus one counters on. This is primarily a white and green ability, so keep that in mind. Anyone playing Support isn't playing Surge, probably. 
The bomb support card that everyone's talking about is Gladehar Cavalry. 7 mana for a 6-6 six, six with support 6, bringing up to 12 power to the table. True bomb. Like the surge bombs I showed you before, if you pull this, it should certainly influence you. Just keep in mind that you don't get to make the most of that support 6 unless you and your teammate actually have 5 other creatures to pump up. You can always make the cavalry a 7-7 seven, seven if you have a target to spare. The good support creatures are way more impactful than the good surge spells. Relief Captain and Jiraga Auxiliary are both disgustingly powerful and this is Judgment is straight up removal. Granted you'll play the Judgment regardless, it still matters that it has support and can target your partner's creatures. Beyond the bombs I just told you about, you'll want to look out for Press into Service, Lead by Example, and Unity of Purpose. These are the best support cards out there, so if you get these in the event and you can fit them in your deck, you probably should. Another thing about Two-Headed Giant you might not know, there is no sideboarding. Yeah, since games can go so much longer, it's all a best of one. With that in mind, you should value specific hoser cards higher than normal. For example, while Tears of Alakit would be risky to play in your main deck in a regular limited tournament against two players, there's a much higher chance that someone is going to play a flyer that you want to burn to death. Also, again, no sideboarding. If the card quality is high enough, it's worth playing. Tears is a great example. So is Negate. Finds of the Recluse might make that cut as well. It's all up to you, but remember, no sideboarding. Account for what you want in your main deck. It's your only chance to. The last thing I'll say about Two-Headed Giant. Most of the rares in this set are great, and whichever colors you end up in, you'll probably play all or most of your rares. There are very few exceptions to this. Also, abilities like Menace get way worse since your opponents can block together. Can't really take advantage of that as much as in a 1 vs 1 duel. Remember, you are two different players, but you share the same battlefield. It's important to keep that in mind. When you attack or block, you do it together every time. When you're not playing Two-Headed Giant, Surge gets much worse, especially in a format like Limited where you assuredly won't get the perfect deck to build around Surge. That's why Two-Headed Giant's so nice. You get a way bigger card pool to draw from. If you do a regular sealed event, support is still very powerful and worth playing if you have enough support, but Surge, it's a risk to go all in on that strategy. Oh, also, Colorless Mana is going to be a lot easier to get in Two-Headed Giant due to the bigger card pool. Twice as many ways, twice as many spawn generators, and so on. Your colorless creatures and creatures that utilize colorless mana get a lot better. However, if one of you plays colorless, do not let the other one play it. Defeats the entire advantage of the larger pool. If we're talking strength of colors, blue and black are far and away the best colors individually. They have a ton of tempo ruining cards, removal up the butt, and quality creatures. It's actually really impressive. If you have an even split in your colors, it's possible going blue-black will assure you a higher average quality of card than any other two-color combination. White has great synergy with mass creatures, as it always has, and green outclasses most creatures individually on a vanilla level, again, as it always has. Red is in a weird place. If you don't open a lot of removal in red, it might be fair to say that the color is simply not worth playing. There are plenty of great situational cards in the color, but they're just that, situational. Well, I hope that answered a lot of your questions about the format and pre-release in general. If you have any other questions or want something clarified, please leave a comment below, and as per usual, I'll be around as often as I can be. I wish you all the best of luck, and when you start opening cards, you should definitely send us pictures. We're on Twitter at The Manosaurus, and we're on Facebook at facebook.com slash The Manosaurus. Go follow us, send us cool pictures, and we'll share them with the world. Again, good luck and kick butt, I believe in you. As always, subscribe for the latest and most reliable Magic the Gathering information you could ever need. This is the Manosaurus, I'm Wedge. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.